Okay, uh, we're back with the Q&A session for the three bidders for the 2015 Worldcon, uh, Spokane, Orlando, and Helsinki. I'd once again like to ask people to, if they have questions about this, uh, raise your hands, I will call on you, and I would restri please restrict your questions to something serious questions. We're not looking to people to show their cleverness. And then I will give uh, people opportunities to answer to them. And I may, I, if we get a lot of questions backed up, I may assign numbers to people. I would like to start them off as the moderator here, a question that is typically asked at these, and I will start off with and give people each a chance to answer. Can you give us an, a general description of the kind of weather we would expect at your site during the time of year that you hold your con that your convention is proposed for? And I'm going to start with Sally here. Okay. Spokane, and the, we are in August 19th through the 23rd. During that period of time, the temperature should be upper 80s, lower 90s, humidity extremely low, and absolutely no rainfall. They measured in microns in August for <laughs> September for Spokane. Okay. It's Florida. Florida. Uh, what it is, usually Labor Day weekend tends to be high about 90 to 95. Uh, the humidity is usually about 75 percent. Can't do anything about that. If it does rain, it is going to rain about 2:33 o'clock in the afternoon for a grand total of 10 minutes. Yeah. You think I'm lying, that is how it is. I don't know why it's yeah. like that, but you can almost set your watch by it. Except when it's postponed to coincide with the deal of the I was at for Orange Magic Concerts. All right. It's a hurricane. I apologize. Yeah. I, I broke my own rules. My apologies. Yes. Oh. So um, 17 hours of sunlight um, is the answer I know. Uh, so there'll be a lot of sunlight. And did we get any answer from Crystal? Yeah, uh, 55 low at night, 50, uh, 72 high during the day. So in, in old money, 52, 55 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. We could use a bit of that right here, I can imagine. All right, uh, you were first. Is that me? Yes. Uh, Helsinki. Do you have any idea how long it takes to fly from California to Helsinki? Um. I would estimate it's on the order of 10 to 12 days. It's probably about 10 hours, I think. Because I've, I've flown from California to Amsterdam, and I think it's probably shorter than that. Okay, thank you. I don't know if you can ask me. Uh, question for everybody. What's the smoking situation? <laughs> Who wants to start? Let's start sure, yeah, I can start because okay. I know it right off the top okay. of my head. In Washington State, you cannot smoke in any public places, you cannot smoke within 25 feet of any door or window. The, whole, the outside of the double tree has a smoking area, as do most of the hotels. Most of them do not allow any, as far as I know, none of the hotels that we're dealing with has any even smoking rooms. There are spot, spots in the park that you can smoke, but that's about it. You will not walk through smoke or get into them very much. Okay. Really what Spokane said about Washington is just about equal with the state of Florida. Uh, you can't smoke in any public places. There are no smoking hotel rooms. You can't smoke in front of doors. There are designated locations in Coronado Springs Resort. They are far from the doors. They're on paths. There's like a path where you walk and there'll be a cutout and then that'll be a place where you can step inside and smoke. But apart from that, no smoking. Anymore. So in Finland, smoking is prohibited in public places, restaurants, Parks, etc. Hotels may allow smoking in a small portion of their rooms. The, the on-site hotel has six rooms for smokers. Uh, the convention center is not smoking. Uh, it does have a separately ventilated smoking room in the conference center, and for those people who just have to get their fix, and it does have a designated smoking area outside. I have two questions for Helsinki. First, uh, you said it was about 180 uh, euros. Is that per room or per person? Per room. Okay, and my second question is where can I get a blue t shirt with a white bear? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sorry. The, the blue t shirts with the white bears are for friends at this point. We will be able to have friends and bid members at this point. Uh, they'll be up in the party, or at, we hope to have a table tomorrow. I believe we're working to take uh, e over either the uh, San Diego table or the site selection table, however that works for WesterCon. Uh, or uh, by the time of Lone Star Con, we hope to have enough t-shirts more printed to uh, be able to sell them just on their own. Uh, can I speak to that? And the question before I go on that I did want to mention in the hotel room rates first, that being the first question. Uh, this was brought up a little bit earlier. For the record, for those unaware of it, 
European hotel room rates are generally quoted inclusive of all taxes, so that's the amount you pay. American hotel room rates are, generally speaking, unless you hear otherwise, uh, quoted before any taxes that may apply. Can I, can I answer that? Yes. I said before the hotel rate included taxes and breakfast. It actually includes taxes, breakfast, and free Wi-Fi. Uh, okay. Can I follow on from the back yeah. here? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, on what's going to happen tomorrow is after site selection closes, uh, San Diego is going to move to where site selection is, and Helsinki will, I uh, guess, you set where, where San Diego is at the moment. Okay, so be able to find it's a pretty compact route. Bill? I have a question for Orlando. Uh, you are interested in outreach. You are on the same weekend as DragonCon, which is, relatively speaking, in your neighborhood. Uh, how do you plan on competing against a convention that's four times your size? None of us there, could I hear that. To, that's why I'm here. I, especially when I have a lighter voice question, I will repeat the question here. Orlando is bidding for the same weekend as DragonCon. Uh, the question is how will, basically, how will the, having Worldcon on the same weekend as DragonCon, a relatively short distance away, affect the convention and how do they deal with which plan to deal with it? The people that are going to go to DragonCon, they're going to go to DragonCon. It doesn't matter if the convention's in Orlando, Spokane, or Helsinki. Uh, what we want to do is when we go out and talk to other people, we want to emphasize the unique qualities that make Worldcon great. One of which is actually that it's smaller than DragonCon. There are a lot of people who go to DragonCon that I know that don't like how big it is. It's too big. You get lost in the crowd. It's, the lines are too long. And that's one thing that we can use to talk to them about, you know, try and give Worldcon a chance. But the other thing that we want to bring up, too, is what I said before in my, in my speech, that when, when you go to a convention like DragonCon, you, you buy a ticket to a show. It's, it's very passive. It's you just go and you just are entertained. But when you go to Worldcon, you become a member of a community. And that's a big thing. That you, know, that you can come and you can experience everything there is to offer. You can add your own contribution to the community as well. And that's something that you can't really do with Dragon. So that's one of the things that we'll do when we win. We'll go out and start talking to people, talking about how great and how unique Wolfman is as a convention and as an experience. Uh, before you do that, I think the thing I, is the question, I was going to ask a question about dates of all three students for the record. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. What I've, I've remembered here is that this is, I believe, uh, the first time I've in my memory at least, in which we've had three different Worldcon bids that I believe all three of them are bidding for different dates. And could you, could we go down the line here and repeat what dates you are bidding for, starting so okay? August 29th through the 23rd. 29th to the 23rd, yes. September. Um, 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 wait, wait, that's back. 19th to 23rd. 19th to 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't sound okay. 19th to 23rd. Thank you. Okay, 19th to 23rd, yes. Yeah. September 2nd through the 6th. The Labor Day weekend. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, thir uh, I believe it's actually it's called UK Bank Holiday Weekend. It is Thursday, August 6th through Monday, August 10th. And I, I'd like to add a little bit about the dates. Uh, yes. While it's true that many attendees will decide what convention they go to, but having it not on Labor Day weekend, we're allowing authors to go to both conventions. There are some authors who are forced, being forced to choose, for example, this year between Dragon Con and Mozart Con. And by being not on Labor Day weekend, anyone who wishes to, to go to both can go to both. And uh, I will say, had uh, had Spokane been bidding for Labor Day weekend, uh, which they are not, I would have because it was a factor for almost every West Coast convention now is how Burning Man was going to affect you. So, but it's not, so we're not going to go there. No. And we looked at that. That's right. Actually, we looked at that. One. So Who's that wasting time now? I'm, I wanted to address it because someone brought it up to me before the, before the panel. Thank you. Linda. For costuming, how friendly is Disney toward people walking in costumes off-site off of the hotel? Uh, we have a costume policy in our contract because that was a big concern that a lot of people had. Wearing costumes at Coronado Springs is totally fine. Wearing Disney costumes is totally fine. The only exception being you can't wear a costume in the theme of water parks. That's it. That's so you the can only do it on caveat. public transportation? You absolutely could if you wanted to, yeah. Uh, in the back, Tony. How does one get around inside the Coronado Resort? How does so one get around the convention center facility? How does one get around inside the Coronado uh, uh, Resort facility? The the hotel part or the actual like convention center part? Both. They From both one to both. the other. From, From one to the other. Well, obviously walking is usually the best way. Uh, but for those that might not be able to, there are uh, little shuttles that go all over the place. 
And so if you have a very far hotel room for whatever reason that you can't or you don't want to walk, there's a shuttle that can come pick you up at your room, drive you on over, and then drop you off. And we'll have those available for everyone who doesn't choose to walk from their hotel room. Glenn, do you have a question directly following on from that? Glenn? What is the maximal distance from the furthest hotel room to the convention center by foot? Uh, we measured it at about 1,200 feet. So it's really not, it's not hugely far, but like I said, if, if you feel that you can't make that for whatever reason, we'll have, you know, shuttles available for you to, to do so. Yes. Um, uh, number of shuttles and latency. What's the, what's the, how many, what? How, how many shuttles shuttle are there and how many? long um, it's, one have to wait it's, from? It's, it's I understand. Yeah, it, I'm it's, a transit it's, it's as okay. many as we want. So if we, if we discover that we need a lot, we can order them. If we discover during Worldcon that we need more, we can order more. So that's that's the best number that I can give. Okay, I, I, mean, I still didn't get yeah. any answer on latency. How long from pick up the phone to the front door of the convention center? Oh, uh, a few minutes at most. When you say a few minutes, uh, it's less than five. Less than five, yeah. I would say less than All five. Right. And do those shuttles run 24 hours? They can if we want them to, and we want them to. Okay, I'm going to take questions from people who haven't asked yet. So, Would the other would the other uh, pitch talk about your species? Uh, well, as, as well as Orlando? Uh, the question is, uh, what are the distances between the uh, convention hotels and the convention facilities in question uh, we'll go from the other, toward the other bits? So, okay, I'm just trying to think. Of the, the five hotels we have under contract, four of them are two blocks or less, and I'm not too certain how that converts to feet away. The, the fifth one is the Davenport, which is one of the furthest ones away. But other than that, they're they are very close. I, Talk I, about I, length of blocks. Pardon me. No, let me. I can actually. They don't have long blocks. Are they Seattle blocks or Portland blocks? More like a Portland block. Uh, that's the short blocks then. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Portland has a very short block time. More like New York, ten miles. Uh, um, okay. So I don't actually know the answer. Um, the, the, you know, we there are forty hotels within twenty minutes travel by public transit. Um, the main on-site hotel has 244 rooms. I said 200 to 250 before I found the exact answer. Um, I believe that most of the hotels we're in consideration with are within about one or two stops on the train, which would probably be uh, closer to five or ten minutes by train. As I recall, the train there is a train station at the convention yes. facility, and then you're like once one or two stops from downtown Helsinki, and that there, the train connects it. This would be similar to Glasgow, which had a train stop at the convention center and hotels connected. As opposed to say Inter Thingy One where the trains weren't running. Well that's true. That's true. <laughs> more like more like the second one where yes. yeah, they were. And and oh uh, actually the, I think that makes are you aware of any potential uh, with, with trains not stopping on certain days like which was the problem at Inter Thingy? I, I don't I believe so. so. So also under one mile's walking distance there are two other hotels but um, most of the hotels by the main train station downtown will probably be quicker. Okay, so Helsinki is a substantially a facility more in the nature of those of you who were in Glasgow, where yeah. most of the hotels are not directly at the site. It would be substantial, but they are a short distance away by one means of transit or another. Would that be a fair assessment? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Follow up for this general question. Um, and this is more directed at Orlando because the answer is applied for the other folks. Um, is the hotel and convention center connected with interior hallways or just covered walkways? So you're outside. The convention center is all underneath. Uh, hotel rooms, you have to walk outside. So to move between the hotel and the convention center, you have to go outside. Yes, room. there are some hotel rooms where they are connected and you can go under a covered walkway. But 90% of us will have to walk outside. All right, then. Uh, all right. What I'm hearing from Orlando is that we can't use Mobis on site? No, you can absolutely use Mobis on site. Okay, because it sounded like you were saying we couldn't use Mobis, we had to use your shuttle. No, 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 not at all. You can use anything. You can walk, you can use your Mobi, you can use a wheelchair, or you can use the golf cart challenge. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Uh, Linda. You were talking earlier about outreach. Um, what kinds of activities do you plan to add to the Worldcon experience? I'll, it's difficult to say specifically because we haven't won the bid yet and we don't have our DH of programming, but a, a lot of it is just going to be determined based on 
you know, what other kind of genre conventions do, <laughs> things that are entertaining there, while also having a, a fanish base to it, that it relates to science fiction. So if it's, if it's an event that is popular at another genre convention that fits with the, what Worldcon does, what Worldcon does really well, then it's something that they will consider. I know that's a very general answer, but it's, it's the best that I can give you. Right that's now. a sufficiently open-ended question that I'd like to give the other two bits of <coughs> answer as well. Okay. The Edmund Empire, which is what we call the dry side of our mountains, <laughs> is Spokane, which has a con convention called Spokane. We have the Missoula, Montana, MizCon, and then the Tri-Cities RadCon. These conventions all have a lot of gaming center. You know, they're, they, they come and they game. So in order to sort of blend it with what they are there and accentuate what they're like, one of the things we are planning on doing is having a fairly large gaming community. Uh, there, uh, and we're also planning on having Spokon since they are giving up their convention for that year, being highly visible within our convention, besides the other things that we have. Um, as you heard in the presentation, I think the co-chairs have an experience with both anime and uh, <coughs> comic cons, and I believe gaming cons. I don't think, you know, obviously FinCon is a 7,000 person convention. We, plan to draw a lot from that, um, plan to draw a lot from European, uh, other European conventions. Um, I don't know more specifics than that at this point. Uh, sure. Um, Sally said, just answered a little bit of this, but in general, most of your committees have um, people who are not from the cities that you're bidding. How are the local fans being included in the bid, will be included in the Worldcon, and how do they feel about the bid? Well, like I've already said, said Spokon, we're including in the bid. I mean, they're working for us. They're helping us. Um, we did not take on this bid without consulting them first to make sure that they did not feel we were stepping on toes or doing anything like that. They will have their chairman and a couple other people particularly will have visible positions within our convention. And like I said, we want to make sure that they are visible so it doesn't hurt their convention for the following year. Is that answered or was there more than one share? Somewhat, but okay. uh, Orlando's really excited about having Worldcon come back. Uh, I know that I've I've talked with uh, the chair of the, of the local uh, science fiction convention, Oasis, many times. There's there are a couple special things that Oasis does that we'd like to do a Worldcon also, sort of traditional Orlando things. Uh, and there are also some things that went on at MagicCon too. Whoops. <laughs> that went on at MagicCon also that we would like to continue as a, a part of uh, Orlando fan tradition. I actually view about a, a quarter to a third of the big community is actually local, certainly uh, the Helsinki or the area around it in Finland. Uh, there's also people from uh, Europe. Part of this is putting World and Worldcon and um, the city of Helsinki and the people in Helsinki are very much uh, behind this, and um, everyone at FinCon, which is in Helsinki now, is very excited about this, and the convention center is very excited about this. Lisa. I have a question for FinCon, for the, uh, the Helsinki bid. As the presentation of the bid chairs showed their excellent English, is there any language issues that, fin that the Helsinki bid sees as a challenge? And as far as programming goes, we had problems in Japan, and I want to know how they're addressing that. Um, so in, uh, perhaps Adam can ask Crystal. I'll tell a little story that in, uh, before many of you were born in like 1978, I took a trip for five weeks through Europe. And I found that basically pretty much um, the further north you got in Europe, the better people's English was. And you could walk up to a five-year-old in Sweden at that time, and they could speak perfect English to you. And it was only at that point when you got down to, say, Italy or Spain, you had any problems uh, talking, uh, speaking to people. And as pe you know, it, 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 people who were 60 in, in uh, Southern Europe had more trouble speaking English. I don't foresee any problems. I think pretty much, uh, you know, uh, I suspect Finland is very much like Amsterdam. I know that pretty much everyone in uh, my company's office in Amsterdam speaks English perfectly. And um, they watch a lot of... Uh, American and British television and, and get a lot of English that way. Okay. I would like all three conventions to address this, but of course particularly Helsinki. What is going to be the party situation? 
Um, are the hotels going to allow parties? Will we have to sneak supplies in? What 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 kind of arrangements are we looking at? Uh, the question was, what is the situation with parties, our traditional par uh, hospitality party events at our at all each of the convention sites? What are the facilities? Opinions on them? Are we going to have to sneak in supplies? Is it going to have to be in function space, corkage, and similar related issues? You want to start with Helsinki because that was where it was originally. We'll come down. This is going to come the other way. So, so obviously, it's it's going to be a European World Cup. There are going to be some challenges. Um, there is not, as things stand now, there is probably not going to be a con suite. However, there is a essentially a large open. Um, restaurant coffee house area with reasonable prices that I think is on like a bridge over the convention center that is a very great uh, meeting area with reasonable prices. Uh, there is a, um, obviously there will be arrangements for um, green room and uh, for staff den. I think there's also a very good space in terms of um, meeting for fanzine lounge where they do a lot of um, uh, professional conferences there with newspapers and stuff like that, so they actually have a very good thing for Fancy Lounge. We do have, we have negotiated a, uh, what I would call a forkage waiver for non-alcoholic beverages with the convention center, catering company. So, uh, you know, there probably will be party space on site at night, and we do have a forkage waiver for that negotiated. Uh, you know, obviously, be uh, alcoholic beverages would be different. Um, we were not able to get a corkage waiver for the function space for Coronado Springs, but Disney has promised to work with us in order to keep the cost down for things like the con suite and green room and things like that. However, for the hotel rooms, that's actually not an issue and a corkage waiver is required. Because Disney World policy not, is not, not, required. not required because Disney World's policy is that you are always allowed to bring outside food or drink into your hotel room. So parties will not be affected at all by not having a corkage waiver for function space. Um, we have two hotels that we're looking at, the big party hotels. One wants it very badly, but they're the furthest away. The other one is willing to give corkage and corkage waivers for a party for party rooms. We're all we're trying to work with the double tree, but we're not going to be able to until we get win the bid because they are the closest and therefore would be the best ones for parties. Okay, before I go on, I want to raise one that I know has been raised to me in the past. I'd like each of the bids to talk about the accessibility issues and their sites, accessibility for people with uh, mobility issues. Do we want to go up and jump into that first? Did we do that? I think we did that. I didn't hear it. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of the first things brought up. Okay. Well, we all, we all okay, kind I of talked about it. Okay, I said, no, wait, you addressed it indirectly. Yeah. And the other thing is, and I'm reminded of it because of the other thing I wanted to ask you about. I'm aware that Cheryl Morgan, when she was there for Acon in Helsinki, did a video walkthrough of the site and then posted that to her website. Do either the other bids have something similar that they can point people to so you can see what the facility looks like to somebody just walking around in um, it? Not now, but we could. Certainly yeah, same, we same now. We have, we have lots and lots of pictures and we have them on our website. Uh, we don't have a video, but we could do that. Okay. That's all I, can say. I apologize yeah. for the way. I think the way in which it was answered before didn't penetrate my mind. I've been standing on my feet quite a bit, including last night. Anyone who hasn't asked a question yet? If not, then we'll take Linda. We have about 10 minutes left. Re regarding the distance between hotels and everything, <clears throat> and for, for parties, uh, for people to buy supplies for the parties, what would be the nearest, super, how far away would the nearest supermarkets be? I, I don't know the answer that I can get back to on it. Yeah. Unless we can find the near, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, what, sir. The, the question is, where is your facilities for, where can you buy groceries and similar supplies near, near the proposed convention facility? The nearest supermarket is Goodings, which is about, say, a 10 minute drive from Coronado Springs. I wouldn't recommend that one, though, because that one caters to the tourists. You're going to spend probably double what you normally would. What I would recommend is once you get to Goodings, you turn right and you go up 535, about three more minutes. There's the biggest Walmart you've ever seen in your life, and they have everything. And it's open 24 hours a day. That's where I would recommend it. It's probably about a mile away from the Doubletree Hotel and Convention Center. There's a large market that has uh, most of everything we would ever need. Um, I've talked with someone else who has had a, a convention at Coronado Springs, 
and my understanding of what they said was that you could not put on your costume in your hotel room and walk to the convention center in a costume that once you were in the convention center you were okay but between the convention center and your hotel room there was an issue and people were told they could not wear their costumes from their hotel room to the convention okay, we, I think we understand the question. Previous experience has been that there has been an issue of this. Do you want to address that? Yeah, the reason why that happened is because, I, I don't know what group that was. The reason why is because that group didn't have the run of the resort. Uh, they didn't have all or most of the hotel rooms. Because our group does, and we have the run of the resort, you're allowed to go from your hotel room to your convention, to the convention center, wearing your costume. Because it's just going to be us. There's not going to be anybody else there. Do uh, either of the other bids for any issues with people in costume? I know there's a specific reason due to Disney. I've I, I heard about this in some rare. I don't no. see a problem. Okay. No. If you uh, walk around Spokane in a costume, you're liable to attract people with cameras. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you've got a couple of questions. Oh, yes. Yeah, you have one. Have one. Um, now, I came in late. Maybe this question's already been answered. But certainly <clears throat> the facilities for having parties have varied greatly in different world cons. I've been to world cons where there was one little teeny round of rooms up on the highest floor of the hotel which got hot and airless and very crowded and there was no place else that where people were having parties. There have been other places where parties were scattered up and down bunches of different towers and it took you forever to get from party to party. There have been some cons, there's one in the Bay Area, where there are nothing but normal sleeping rooms for having parties. So what are the facilities I, I think, yeah. for big groups to have parties? We've over, we, before we, you have the facilities that we have talked about now about the catering issues involved with them just a couple minutes ago, but the question is, <laughs> what are the physical facilities where, uh, that you expect parties and hospitality functions to right. be in? What are the issues there? Who would like to <laughs> start down there? I mean, I think I, I touched on this. At this point, we expect the parties to be in the convention center, probably similar to what LawnCon is doing, but we are looking at other options as well. Uh, and we expect there to be a mix of spaces, and you know, we don't expect the, the heat problem that uh, plague. Uh, well, would you have to shut them down by midnight or something then? Um, I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Okay. Uh, Coronado Springs has 46 suites. Uh, 43 of which are really located next to each other. There's, it's basically broken up into three different kind of groupings of hotel rooms, uh, casitas, cabanas, and ranchos. 43 of the suites are in casitas, three are in cabanas, so what we'll do is we'll use the 43 that are all together. There's six suites that have like 1,500 square feet, 10 at 1,000 square feet, and the rest have like about 700 square feet. So that's what we would use. Okay. Okay, and we have about five minutes left. Okay, we, we've got two hotels, they both want to be party suites. We have one that we want. But considering we have all done parties, all of us during the bid process have suffered similar problems, <laughs> believe me, we will try our very best to not have those happen. That's all I can say because it's so all in the negotiation. I'm taking preference to people who have not asked, asked questions yet. So if that, I know you had a hand up everybody, but I'm taking preference to people who have not asked questions yet. Back in the back, Rock. Regarding the, for the, at least where you've got hotels under contract, what is the percentage of the sleeping rooms currently in the room block where you expect to be being picked up by Worldcon uh, members as opposed to outside uh, guests? Okay. The question was, what proportion of the, of the sleeping rooms does the, do the bids expect to be being used by their conventions? We have all of the 244 rooms at the uh, attached hotel, and I don't think we're at that level. We're negotiating with other hotels, but we're not at that level yet. Of the 1,920 rooms that are at Coronado Springs, we have about 1,820, uh, and we have an attrition rate of 25%. So we can slash that by 25% and still be totally okay. Costumes, not paying attrition damages, anything like that. I have to say, I do not have that figure off the top of my head. Come see me at the table because I do have them. Okay, okay. Kent. Yeah, I want and to I'll have, I'm only have, I think we have time for one more after that. Okay. I wanted to ask what your expected well, membership rates are going to be, uh, both uh, after site after after you're selected and uh, at the door. 
Yes. Membership, is it your membership rates? Membership what rates. What are your expected membership rates after you're elected and perhaps port at the door? Uh, we haven't determined our price structure and we haven't made any uh, decisions about discounts for students or whatever. <coughs> but we're hoping to make it as affordable as possible uh, for everyone without uh, compromising quality. And uh, FinCon generally gets a lot of grants from the government. Um, so um, FinCon is free, but we don't expect to be able to make it that cheap. Um, we're the Worldcon, and we will use our experience to raise as much money as we can for the grants from the government and stuff like that. And I think uh, we, you know, I think we push to keep the voting fee low this year. Yeah. Uh, we haven't made any determination either, uh, but it's something that actually we're going to talk about, believe it or not, on Saturday. I have a Skype meeting after to attend with our proposed DH of finance, uh, but. Uh, we're really, really committed to try making it as affordable as possible too, especially for younger people because that's really where a lot of people go for other types of genre conventions. So if we can get them in and hook them in, hopefully they'll be uh, world kind of goers for life. Okay. Well, I just have to sort of echo everybody else. We've come up with some proposed, some figures that are looking good to us. We have not finalized anything. We will be giving like military discounts. We're looking at giving uh, Spokane residents a discount, students, this sort of thing. Uh, we have not come up with final figures either. We will look for it before we'll start talking. There is a related question that, in my opinion, before I take Mike Wilbon as our last question. Uh, I believe everyone is familiar with the pass along funds revenue sharing scheme between World Cons. Have the bids made decisions on whether they, whether they expect to be participating in the plan? Yes, we can participate. Absolutely. I don't know the answer that we can find out, but I expect it's yes. We will. Uh, yeah. Crystal says we will. Uh, thank you. Mike Wilmoth will be our last question. I was going to clarify Spokane's hotel situation. Uh, they have about a third of the rooms at the Doubletree, and they have most of the rooms at the uh, Davidport, and most of the rooms at the two Red Lions. Since that was a follow-on, that would give room for one more question. We'll take that one. Follow-up on an earlier question. Programming language. <coughs> Question to Helsinki, how do you plan to do programming language-wise? Uh, I expect it to be English. 95% English and the remainder are Finnish and Swedish. All right. Thank you. I could real quick? Uh, yes. Um, ours are obviously going to be English, but because of the large Spanish-speaking population in Florida, we're considering doing a Spanish language track, similar to what they'll start on reasoning. I do think that actually covers it, and we're trying to keep it to half an hour. I but would like to just say that at LoneStarCon there will be Spanish speaking. Yeah, at yeah. LoneStarCon we'll have a Spanish speaking track. Okay. okay. Can we have would one you like to yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay, a wind them up statement and we're going to let it go. And then we're gonna, but we're not going to be completely on the We're going to give Kansas City a, ch a chance if they want to. to and that's after that. Yeah. After that. Oh, Even right. if they don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One thing I brought up is that we have some finished candy and rather than passing it out now and, uh, and disturbing things, uh, we'll be at the door at the end if you want to finish any of the way or come to our party or come to our table club. And, and, and your party is? 9 p.m. tonight in room 1227. Uh, lower cause, more outreach, Lord Orlando. Also did. Yeah. Do you have a party? No, not tonight. Okay. We had our party last night, so a lot of people came, enjoyed our fireworks display. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're all looking forward to having as many of you vote, vote for Seattle. Seattle. Oh, I've been in Seattle for so many years, and we haven't made it, so we moved to Spokane, but it starts with an S, so it's too easy to say. All right, all of the all of the bids have their uh, tables in the fan table area. I hope you found it. If you didn't, you, if it didn't, then I, you don't have a registered membership badge. Thank you all for your patience with us, and that's for the 2015 bidders. Thank you.